Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be evaluating a very strange exponential expression. I to the power I to the power I to the power I, where we kind of stack up all these I's. Obviously, you can express this a little differently. I forgot what it's called, but uh, there's a way to write the exponent on the left-hand side and I think it means tetration or something like that. Yeah, I believe so. Anyways, we've done a I to the I before. I can't remember if we did I to the I to the I. Probably, that's probably why I picked four I's in this case. But let me know if you do know the answer. Let's get started. So to be able to find this exponential tower, which is finite, by the way, think about the infinite case. What would happen if you had I to the power I to the power I to the power I? And this goes on forever. Obviously, something you need to think about is convergence. Is that going to converge? What is the value going to look like? So on and so forth. So I'm going to go through this problem and give you some evaluations. And then at the end, we're going to check our answers against Wolfram Alpha. It's going to give you a numerical answer, which is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to start. And by the way, when I write something like this, it should be understood as follows. We do this first which is i to the i, and then that is taken as an exponent, and we take the i as a base, and then finally we take the lowest i as our base. Make sense? Otherwise, if we had started here, then it would look like, let's say I did i to the i to the i, it would be different because then you would multiply this, that would be i to the i squared, and that would be like i to the power of negative 1, which is 1 over i, which is negative i. So that's different. So by exponentiation like this without parentheses, what I mean is you have to start here and go back down, okay? Let's make that clear first, and now we can go ahead and start. And this is where we start, since we have to start at the very top, we can go ahead and evaluate this first. And guess what? I, I've done that before, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we did, and you'll be surprised at the result if you haven't seen that video yet. If not, go ahead and also check it out. But i to the power i, and I don't think I'm going to write i's that way. This is probably easier. To find i to the i, we're going to use the exponential form, which is the polar form. So in the complex plane, which is also called the Argand plane, we have two axes, imaginary and the real. And i can be expressed as 0 plus 1i. So in other words, we're talking about the point 0, 1, which is going to appear here, one unit away from 0. So that's our i as a vector, or if you want to represent it as a point, that's fine too. But it makes an angle, when expressed as a vector, makes an angle of pi over 2 radians, which is the argument of our number. So there are two things you need to worry about. One of them is r, which is the modulus, or the absolute value. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over the basics. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out cyber math, cyber with an s. Great. Now, this is absolute value or modulus, which is usually represented by r and theta is the argument or the angle. In this case, it happens to be pi over 2, but be careful. There are infinitely many values, because if you add it to 2 pi, you'll get to the same point. So you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, so this could be best expressed as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. In this case, our theta happens to be that one. But to simplify things a little bit, because we kind of need to focus on principal values, which means we're going to take n equals 0 in this case, and just go with pi over 2 as our argument, because it'll simplify things. If you want to complicate, be my guest, you can go ahead and do that, and let us know how that goes. So, here's how it goes. i to the power i is, I'm going to express now i as e to the power i times pi over 2, and then remember, this just comes from here, but r is 1, theta is pi over 2, so I don't need to write the 1, and now we're going to raise it to the power i, and guess what? i's will be multiplied. And that'll make i squared. Oops, I forgot to tell you, i squared is negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1. Makes sense? I hope it does because we're about to simplify this. i squared is negative 1, so this will be uh, e to the power negative pi over 2. Wow. i to the i is a real number? Yes, it is. It is a real number, which is weird, right? You take an imaginary, raise it to an imaginary power, and all of a sudden, boom, you get a real number. That's the beauty of i. There are so many other things. Euler's most beautiful equation comes from, you know, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's another topic. Let's stick to this. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this i to the i and stick it in here. Since I already know what it is, now we're kind of going back on titration, right? We had the two of them, now we're going to stack up three, but we already know the i to the i. So we're just going to replace that with e to the power negative pi over 2. But again, I'm telling you, this is only the principal value. If you want to go full-blown, everything, you can do so. Just replace pi over 2 with pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and things are going to get very interesting. Okay? Great. This is i, so you can raise it to the power i again, but this time you'll get a negative 1, but you're going to have some n's in there or pi's in there too. Okay? Good, so I showed you how to do it. Hopefully you can take it from here, but we're going to try to keep it simple, especially for beginners, right? We shouldn't be scaring them. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I needs to be raised to another power. So I need to express I again in polar form, but I already know it, right? What is I? e to the power I pi over 2. Again, in the simplest principal form. So now we're going to go ahead and do that. e to the power I times pi over 2 raised to the power... Are you ready? e to the power negative pi over 2. Beautiful. Now what's going to happen? We're going to multiply the exponents. Again, again, this is i to the i to the i. So there is three i's in there. This is going to be e to the power i times pi over 2 times e to the power negative pi over 2. You've got to be very careful not to mix things up. Okay? You see a pattern? It's coming up. Now, this is i to the i to the i. And now we're going to take that as an exponent and put it on top of i. So i to the power of that. Makes sense? If this is like w, then we'll evaluate i to the power w. That's going to be the last thing. Promise. Okay? And then we'll go to the result from Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if we can agree on something. Right? Okay, great. Now, what is next? Well, first of all, I want you to think about it. Or maybe you don't need to think about it. Right? But here's what you need to do. What does this mean, like, as a complex number? Think about it for a minute. Like, let's pause and try to write this as a complex number. Okay, you're going to need, knees. You're gonna need Euler's formula. e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this kind of allows you to write anything exponential in the standard form, like a plus bi. Of course, I'm assuming in this case, a squared plus b squared is 1. Otherwise, you'll have an r on the outside. I hope that makes sense. If, not, if it doesn't, always ask questions. That's the best way to learn. Now... Going off of that, we can basically write this as, let's see, cosine of theta. And in this case, this is going to be your theta. You see that? I, anything multiplied by i is your theta. So it's going to be like cosine pi over 2 times e to the power negative pi over 2 plus i times sine of the same thing. So theta is not going to change. Obviously, it's the same thing for the same number. But if you can evaluate these values... You know, it's going to give you an angle in radians. Pi over 2 is like 3.14 divided by 2. 1.5 is something. Multiply it by that. You'll get a value. That's going to be your angle. Cosine it, sine it, put it in. You should get the answer. I'm not going to do it because Wolfram Alpha can do it for us, right? But this is not the end of all because we still have to do one more. What is it? It's i to the power of that. So what we're going to do now i to the i. And let me just show you. Let me see what color I use. That green. Okay, great. So I'm going to start with an orange base, if that looks like orange to you. I to the I to the I. You get the idea? Now, I know what this is, so I can just substitute. You see how that works? The titration go, kind of goes backwards. So I to the I to the I is e to the power I times pi over 2 times e to the power negative pi over 2. Awesome. This is our I to the I to the I, and I to the that is going to be our answer. But what do you make of this, right? So again, we do need to fix the base. Use the exponential form. This is e to the power i pi over 2. Again, oversimplification down to principal form. And now we're going to raise this to the power e to the power i pi over 2 times e to the power negative pi over 2. I hope this is not super confusing. It looks confusing. Now we're going to make it e to the power. We're going to multiply these exponents. So you've got to be very careful. It's e to the power i times pi over 2 times e to the power i pi over 2 times e to the power negative pi over 2. By the way, you could combine these two things if you wanted. Like you can write this as if you want e to the power negative pi over 2 plus i pi over 2. Which 
kind of looks a tiny bit better. I don't know if you agree with that, but that's basically what it is. This might probably be better because that's just I. And guess what? If you turn it into I, actually, it's probably going to be a better idea I'm thinking right now. I don't know why I didn't do that before. Uh, or did I do it correctly? Hmm, I hope so. But basically, let's, let's go back a little bit and try to track this down. Because I got this, I to the I to the I. And then, oh, okay. Uh, this became, and where did that, that come from? I pi over 2. Oh, okay. So this is, uh, okay, I see. So this becomes I. And when it becomes an exponent, it makes more sense. Okay. As a base, we wouldn't do that. But this is the same as I. So you can basically write this as e to the power i times pi over 2 times, I hope I did it correctly because this doesn't look right to me. Anyways, you get the idea, hopefully. Now, when I multiply these two things, I'm getting i squared, which is negative 1. So I'm getting e to the power some real number, which should be a real answer. But what does Wolfram Alpha say? Let's go ahead and settle this for good. And Wolfram Alpha says, uh-oh, that is not a real number. It is a non-real complex number. And you're going to find out why we have a discrepancy. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.